I chose to explore an old game that many people probably don't know about. This game is called Hare and Hounds. Now, the object of the game seems pretty simple. The hounds are to move one piece, one space at a time, only in the north, northeast, east, southeast, or south direction. The hounds cannot move backwards. The hare, however, can move in any direction and one space around as well. The wolves can win if they trap the hare and make it so the hare has no available moves. The hare wins if it can slip by the wolves and not be captured or stall out for 25 moves without being captured. When I first started looking into this game, I noticed that it was so hard to win as the wolves against the computer. Honestly, I never won a single game. Then, when I switched to be the hare, I occasionally won by stalling out, but often the computer just destroyed me and I couldn't win at all as the wolves. Or the hare. This was what really interested me, so I wanted to figure out why exactly this happened. Maybe the computer had some sort of perfect play that I didn't know about, and if so, I started asking, is this game broken in any way? I thought that the easiest way to look at moves in this game as perfect or not would be to explore different movement combinations. I realized I needed a system to explain different moves for each side. I numbered each of the spaces as shown, and in order to specify what piece I was moving, I would put a W or an H followed by the current number the piece is standing on with an arrow pointing to the new numbered space they would move to. So for example, moving a hair from space 6 to space 9 would be H6 arrow 9. I looked deeper into the game, and if you notice the board shape, the most important space to hold by either side is the space I numbered as 6. It is the main access point and the complete center of the board. The wolves have to hold this spot by the second move, or if the hare does, the hare can automatically win. I believe the game was set up in this way to ensure that the wolves have the ability to access space 6 before the hare does just for this reason. As I continue to play games and track certain moves, I noticed that only specific patterns and how the hare and hounds were positioned really mattered. For example, the first few moves by either side are almost entirely irrelevant. The only moves that really matter are those that happen on the right side of the board. The reason I thought the spaces from row 5 and to the right were the only ones that affect the game is because the hare can always run to the right and it is really the only logical way the wolves can trap the hare. I started to call these patterns that the hare and hounds were arranged in as states. There ended up being six mirrored and two single specific states in which the pieces could be arranged. For example, if the pieces are Wolf 5, Wolf 6, Wolf 7, and Hare 10, it would be mirrored with Wolf 5, Wolf 6, Wolf 7, and Hare 8. The strategies I would create would be the same, just mirrored. I then thought to myself that it's possible that each of these states could happen on either side's turn, so I had to develop a strategy and what to do for each case. Since I'm still determining on whether or not this game is broken, I wanted to ask if it was possible if the Hare could always win because I seriously could never beat the computer while playing as the Wolves. My end goal was to come up with a way to create perfect play by the hare to always win against perfect play by the wolves. And perfect play by the wolves, they should never allow the hare to get by or move into any position that allows the hare to get by them and should only make the best possible moves to trap the hare. After many trials and setting up specific states to start from by either side, I finally came up with a strategy sheet for what to do in specific situation as the hare in order to always win by a stall out. I then noticed that there are only four real situations that the hare has to avoid in order to always secure a win. Of course, with perfect play, the hare will never get into these situations, and the wolves will always be trying to set up these situations. These situations are this when it's the wolf's turn, this which is just a mirrored form of what we just saw, this when it's the hare's turn, which is mirrored by this when it's the hare's turn, this when it's the wolf's turn, because it will essentially just turn into this as the hare's turn, which we just talked about, which is mirrored by this when it's the wolf's turn, which just turns into this when it's the hare's turn. In situation one is the hare, they're going to move back, and now as long as they avoid the center, they'll win. And they'll stall it out. So if it was the hare's turn, the situation would be just mirrored the exact same way. Uh, 8 would move back to 11, but because it's the wolf's turn and you're not supposed to move into this, the wolves will just move 5 to 8 and make it a force no matter where they go. In situation 3, as the hare, it's going to move back to 11, so it doesn't force the other two for situation 1 and 2 that they're not supposed to move into. forces me to move one of my two wolves, and they're going to move to the opposite side, and then never move back to the middle. Situation 3 is the wolf's turn because I have to move either this one or this wolf. I move here, and now the only move I have is to move down, and now he just avoids the middle, and he won it.
Uh, the hare should not have moved into this situation here. The wolves will just move wolf 2 to wolf 5. Now, no matter where the hare goes, it's completely trapped, and the wolves will win from this point. So, this would be situation 5, and it forces this wolf to move. I needed to go 9 to 10, which forces this one down. And then I just avoid the middle like we've been doing the whole time. Okay, in situation 7, it's a little tricky. We're going to move to the middle. Since he moved here and forced it, we're going to move down and set up the same situation that we just showed. In situation 7, they're going to move 11 and 9. And then if they force back, once again, the hare should move down. The wolves will move back down and the hare will go back to the center. Then the wolves are forced to move their wolf 4 and the hare will move back down. And then the wolves are forced to move their wolf 8 and the hare will avoid the middle like we've been showing. Situation 8 is the wolves. Their best move is to move either their wolf 5 or wolf 8. In this case, I'll move wolf 8, and the hare will just avoid the center like we've been showing. In situation 11 or 12, as the hare's turn, you're going to pressure into the line, which forces wolf 8 to move. Then you're going to move back, and it forces that other wolf to move, and then you're going to avoid the middle, just like we've been doing. In the same situation as the wolves' turn, the wolves will just move 4 to 7 and put the hare in the same trap situation that we've been seeing previously. In situation 14, we're going to move 9 to 8. And then depending on how they move, since they moved into situation 1, we are going to use situation 1 rules where we move back and then avoid the middle. So once again, in situation 14, we're going to move 9 to 8. So now the wolves have moved in back into situation 11, so we're going to use those rules. We are going to pressure the line like we've always been doing, which is going to force that wolf, and then we're going to move back and then avoid the middle like we've been showing. So you never want to move into a situation 14 because the wolves will move 5 to 8, and then no matter where you go as the hare, you're essentially trapped. In the end, it was really fun looking into this old game, and I noticed some really cool properties about it. A game designed this way that doesn't have a tie feature is very in favor of the hare. It just showed that the hare will always win, and it's not by slipping by like it was probably meant to. Perfect play by both sides determines a stall out, and while technically it should be a tie, the hare still wins stall outs. I really enjoyed looking into the graph theory behind this game and determining strategies to use for each side to create the best possible outcome.